。好，现在是纽约时间十月六号的下午三呃两点五十分。我正在纽约的 East Village， 在 Manhattan Island 上面。那我刚刚中午呢，去吃了传说中的台菜餐厅八八六。现在要来到一个非常 classy 的、非常精美的 CBD 店。那我们先从外面看一下，因为其实跟其他的店差蛮多的，就是呃，因为纽约 CBD 实在是很不红啊。问一下很不红，就是他们法规比较落后，所以有点麻烦。这边真的很漂亮，它让我想到伦敦。我不知道为什么纽约一直让我想到伦敦。对，不是巴黎，但就很像伦敦。对，那像它这边就有 CBD tinctures, pills, edibles, topicals, flower, bed pens， 还有给宠物用的。啊，哎 ，I'm making videos to introduce like your store. It's amazing. 然后这个是他们的小招牌，对。那好了，我们哦看地上，我觉得这家店真的正常很多啦，就比较像是我以为我会看到的东西。好了，来喽，然后直接进去。好，这边是。Hi， nice to meet you, Zoe. Steve. Steve, nice to meet you. How are you? Great. Making videos to introduce my followers to your tour. 好啦，这个是给狗吃的，不觉得很可爱吗？宠物 CBD， 然后 select， 当然，它之前叫 social， 那这边都是宠物用的。这是书 ，T-shirt。好，这个，这个是保养品，它叫 Kana。那都是 CBD 的保养品啊，还有紫米面膜、晚安面膜，我觉得很酷。然后这间店真的很有趣。那这边是 h a m p i n g Fuse 的饮料，这应该就是 CBD 啊，因为这家店不是 dispensary， 所以它不行有 THC， 丢它那 THC 的东西。棒的产品，我、哦、这个是比较有名的止痛用的，对，看有没有很漂亮。这个比较像是我想象中在纽约应该要看到的店，而不是，而不是<笑>一些怪奇的店，对。好，这个就是 Delta e i t e n Fuse 的东西，这个是巧克力，对。可惜我从纽约去那边的行李没有很重哦，大家看一下，这个东西是 CBD flower， 它里面没有 THC， 理论上是合法的，理论上，但我没有要，我没有要挑战法规的意思。对，然后这边是 pre roll， 呀、yeah, ，真好笑 ，Don't talk to me until I。I've had my CBD. 我每天都想在办公室说这句话，对，很有趣哦。这些都是。好，大家可以看到这个店就是很漂亮啊。Weed. Oh my god! Like smoking weed is super illegal in Taiwan. Yeah. So dealing it, like easily getting like ten years in jail. Yeah. What? Sure. Please do that. Yeah. Please do that. Yeah, a lot of people getting caught, getting arrested just because of this. I know. That's so dumb. You know, even my parents.、Uh, I'm Chinese Vietnamese, and、uh, I only speak Cantonese.、Mm -hmm. But、um, when I opened the store, my mom was like, you know. Do anything else? Open a restaurant? Open laundromat? I'll, I'll I'll help you do it. I'll give you the money to open it. But this, I won't help you. So just make sure you understand what you're choosing. I was like,、mm -hmm. okay, I understand. And so I stuck with it because 
I knew, especially with CBD, it's a different mm -hmm. story. Like, mm -hmm. you know, any of our parents can take it and yeah. they're not gonna freak out. No. You know, maybe it helps them sleep, maybe it helps them with pain, but like, they're not gonna freak out. Mm -hmm. But before, I used to tell my mom, because they're arranged marriage. My mom and dad came from uh, Vietnam, mm -hmm. arranged, like, met three months, married. And then four kids. Wow. So like, <clears throat> then moved to America, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things happening. Your kids grow up and they want to live American style. Mm -hmm. And then you grow up and you see how American husbands are a little bit different than in China, right? Like mm -hmm. we share the responsibilities. <laughs> yeah. And like even right now, you know, no disrespect to my dad, but he's stuck in that way. Mm -hmm. Like he eats and he just, <laughs> and then my mom takes care of it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's a it's a big change, mm -hmm. and I think now, it's a, over time, it's like a, it's a lot. Yeah, I have a, I actually have a bet. I have smoked too much. <laughs> <laughs> I smoke way too much. It's never been too much. Yeah, there's no such thing as too much. No. Because as long as you can still get your stuff done, there's mm -hmm. no such thing. But, um, anyways, yeah, so. CBD, like, now my mom's tried it, yeah. you know? Like, she never would try weed. She like it? Uh, she like it, but you know what? She's she's so scared, she always talks about she's gonna scared to get addicted. Cause she <laughs> thinks it's still a drug. Or, like, she still kind of puts it together like that. That they probably addicted to sleeping Co pills. Coffee, sleeping, yeah, sleeping pills. They're getting pills shipped from Hong Kong, like, for, I don't know what kind of special pills to prevent cancer. I'm like, huh? what are you doing? Like, this is a regular medicine, like, you know, so, but again, it's just like us teaching them mm -hmm. and like educating them and, and not being angry. I used to get really upset. You, you don't, you don't understand, you know, mm -hmm. but then now it's like, mom, maybe marijuana is not, you don't like it, but this can help you mm -hmm. and you won't get high. I said, you won't get high, you won't get high, you won't get high. And she slowly came around, but mm -hmm. you know, that took me like, 20 years to convince her. Wow. Um, I actually, it was very tough for me because, um, can you drink alcohol? Yeah. Oh, I can't fucking drink. Why? I can't drink. I get like, my breathing closes up, I get itchy, I get all yeah. this shit. Same here, but that's only choice. I cannot smoke yeah, in Asia, right? Yeah, that's true. So, like, but it's uncomfortable though. Yeah, so every time I have weed, I won't even drink, oh. even like a drop. Oh, so because I couldn't drink when I was younger mm -hmm. um, in California, I I turned to drugs, like hard drugs. I experimented with everything. Okay. I was like cocaine. That's what made me go to rehab um, because I was like basically 16 years old, mm -hmm. like full blown addiction. I tried everything because I was 13, I think, when I first tried a beer or mm -hmm. whatever. And then we tried with my friends like a shot or maybe half the shot glass mm -hmm. and then a little bit and I kept getting sick so they're like I don't know maybe you can try this and so I didn't have good friends around me I tried everything by the time I was 16 I had to go rehab mm -hmm. treatment uh, for uh, drug um, addiction for how long? Um, that treatment was for about two and a half years because I, I had to get myself clean and then I also had to go to repeat um, the end of high school because they oh. took me out <laughs> So wait, they lock you somewhere? Yeah, they you're you're away. It's all boys, um, like eight eight people, uh -huh. and you do intense therapy, uh, drug counseling, and then group counseling, and then uh -huh. school. You do all that, and you you don't live at home. You're away. I was in Arizona. That sounds like some juvenile jail. Kind of, but I went I went willingly. Oh. I came to my my tai, my, my my oldest aunt, her my mm -hmm. mom's oldest sister, mm -hmm. and um, I basically told her I was like, hey, you know, I have uh, I have a problem. I've been stealing money. I've been out of control, and mm -hmm. I know it's because of the drugs. And I, I want help. Mm -hmm. I don't want I don't want to live like this. So mm -hmm. she helped me um, talk to my mom. They found like a counselor to put mm -hmm. me in the right treatment program. And so I did it um, out of my own will. And it was the best thing for me. You know, that that process is, is hard to explain, but as, at such a young age, you program your brain to think something is okay. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to shift that mm -hmm. completely around, right? So I'm like thinking stealing things okay, mm -hmm. coming to the party, I have all the drugs, that's cool. 
but then you realize like that's not, you know, and, and to flip that is harder mm -hmm. than you think. It's easier said than done. When I finished that, mm -hmm. my parents were like, oh, so now you don't do drugs. But then after two years of being in California, and it's legal by the way, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's medical, legal. Oh no, it didn't That's legalize. Legal. It was medical. Yeah, right. It was medical. And, um, you know, I, I got my prescription and I was smoking again and they mm. got really upset. You know, Chinese culture like that's mm. not okay. So she was like, they were very upset um, telling yeah. me like, you know, like if we had known you were going to throw away the opportunity, we wouldn't, you know, have yeah, done it. And so of... I got very upset. Mm. I tried to, um, I tried to take my own life in California mm. when I was like 19 years old. And so after that moment, um, you know, I, I realized, I was like, yo, I did my therapy. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing the hard shit. I'm mm -hmm. doing, you know, just weed. Mm -hmm. And they still, like, don't understand me. Like, I'm actually a good person now, except I smoke weed. <laughs> and they can't, they mm -hmm. can't, they can't see it. Mm -hmm. So I just left. I went to New York, uh, started establishing my life here, and then I've been here ever since. Wow, so there was how long? Like 13 years ago. Wow. Yeah. So before you start, uh, started go to the industry, what kind of food? Seafood. Wow. Yeah, my that's, family's in seafood. That's totally different. Yeah. yeah. So my family is in seafood industry. Um, we have, my mom and dad have the store. Uh -huh. My uncle has distribution. Uh -huh. And then my other uncle is import-export. Uh -huh. And then another uncle in Vietnam, aquaculture. He's growing, farming the fish. So we're vertically integrated wow. in seafood, but um, I could I could still have success and like a comfortable mm -hmm. job and wage, and I enjoyed it, you know, mm -hmm. selling fish. Um, but choose. weed is my dream. That's like my dream. That's something I can do. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to do. So are you happy with your current? Oh yeah, choice. it's tough, you know, I would say I think a lot of people try to start their own mm -hmm. things and I think we hear people say like, you know, starting a business is tough, mm -hmm. but when you're actually in it, you know, um, it's, you, you understand what that really means and it's like you're constantly thinking mm -hmm. about it, constantly trying to figure out how to make it better and make mm -hmm. you money, Yeah. Right? so, um, but it's fun because when it's yours, you're willing to like, just put in time, you know, when it's for someone else and you count the time. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so for like talking about this place, can you like give us a very brief Yeah. Do? Yeah, so um, we're gonna come back daily. Our yeah. CBD store is the one in the East Village and um, this was our our second second store. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the back here we kind of do events. Mm -hmm. um, the big thing about CBD was like how do I bring people in for something that they're interested in that's exciting and then teach them something a little bit boring? It's exciting for me, weed stuff, but for other people, maybe it's kind of boring. Explaining the science, like, oh, CBD can help with this, can help with this. No one wants to come just for that, right? So mm -hmm. maybe we do like an art show back here mm -hmm. and people come and do art and then we have CBD cocktails, ah, right? No nice. alcohol, only CBD and we'd let them try it and maybe some people notice the effects and they tell us mm -hmm. like, oh, I feel it or I don't feel it and we're able to like talk to them in an interactive way mm -hmm. rather than like just like mm -hmm. give a PowerPoint and be like, okay, this is, this is why it's good. It's not you know? coming to college. Yeah, so um, yeah, we, we had this store almost three years now. Um, our store is experiential, so uh, mm -hmm. kind of like I said earlier, because I knew the customers can't like really freak out, mm -hmm. like they can't get so high that they're like, oh, I can't handle it. I was like, try it. Mm -hmm. I opened everything. I'm like, hey, go try it. So before uh, the New York legalized, officially legalized cannabis, does that change anything, like for the um, industry in general here in New York? I think um, it's gonna change because uh, CBD just it's it's still so new. You have to teach a lot of people about it, and with weed, like I say it all the time, like even. My grandma knows what weed is, but if you ask her what CBD is, she doesn't know, mm -hmm. right? You know, so it's just a different, it's a different, they're two different worlds, even though they're very mm -hmm. related, uh, it's very different. Well, uh, it's like, 
I noticed that the smoke shops were like a lot of weird store on the street mm -hmm. they're selling CBD as well but this is like the most legit store I've ever seen in New York yeah so I guess it's still very um, people are not really familiar with CBD mm -hmm. product in New York not as like in uh, West Coast yeah yeah West Coast is, is much much more educated on mm -hmm. it but even then you know you know what gives me uh, reminds me that it's so new is when I was in LA mm -hmm. for a trade show um, mm -hmm. we were uh, doing like a CBD experience and someone came and he was like oh you know I kind of kind of tried this before but it didn't really do do anything for me so I just think it's kind of bullshit and I was like oh really but it was a it was a friend of mine mm -hmm. from high school so I was like oh dude let me give you like some stuff and then I asked him like your wife she just I knew they had a mm -hmm. kid so I said your wife had like pain or anything get, let them try it like, get use this stuff to try it mm -hmm. And he was like, dude, she's like, she canceled her acupuncture appointment because the CBD cream mm -hmm. helped her pain and she feels like she doesn't need it. And wow. so that person has been smoking weed since before I can remember. He was one of the first of our friends to smoke weed. That's funny. But he never allowed his mind to expand and understand another side of the, part, the plant. Because if you really think about it, right, like CBD, we're talking about it because it's new, but mm -hmm. if we were to go and find wild marijuana growing mm -hmm. like just out yeah. of the ground on a mountain, it's more balanced, mm -hmm. THC and CBD. Yeah. And so the reason why we don't have that same CBD is because, you know, we took mm -hmm. the plants and crossed them and made them strong as shit. Mm -hmm. But, um, in reality, I think it's important to have that balance. And even, you know what I learned from a doctor, they, they were teaching me, if you look at someone's brain imaging, mm -hmm. um, when they smoke weed and go to sleep, right? Mm -hmm. THC interrupts the REM and sleep cycle, mm -hmm. but um, uh, CBD promotes it. So you're, you're getting better sleep when you integrate CBD into your like routine. That's very interesting. Yeah. Like, um, but I want to talk more about the CBD, CBG flowers. Mm -hmm. Like, is that popular now? Like, um, it is getting popular. I think uh, people just want to try new things, mm -hmm. you know, that are coming out. But uh, CBG is more of a focus kind of um, lighter, mm -hmm. I would say. Okay. Um, and do you have ATHC? So. Yeah. It seems like a new thing because it's under farm bill, but not the orthotic act, whatever. Yeah. So it seems like everybody could sell it. Yeah, so uh, some states have banned it. Uh, new York State tried to ban it, but um, they have not mm -hmm. uh, fully banned it yet. I think it will come out when they legalize like the full regulations for mm -hmm. marijuana. I believe I heard they said that they would say only licensed marijuana stores can sell Delta 8. But right now, it's the best-selling item in the store. Oh, yeah. seriously? Yeah. I'm surprised. Especially for people... Are I mean, getting high? I don't know, I, I, I don't feel it, but... Maybe we don't because we're... Definitely. We're like heavier users, but um, people that... Huh. People, there's two people. Sometimes people that smoke weed for a long mm -hmm. time, they get paranoid now, or like it, like something changed and mm -hmm. they, it's not, mm -hmm. they don't enjoy it, right? So they like it. Mm -hmm. And then also people that have smoked weed before, but they said it's too strong, mm -hmm. they like Delta 8 because it's like half high, yeah. You're only like half high. You know how we, we sell it to people? We say, look, if marijuana is liquor, like hard liquor, then Delta 8 is a beer. Okay. Yeah. That's so easy. now you see, you have to uh, drink a lot of beers for us to feel what we want to feel. Mm -hmm. So, um... Talking about um, customers, like mm -hmm. what kind of customers like come over the most? Like, I mean, old people, um, young people, ladies, or definitely uh, older people. And that's why we we kind of made the store the way we did is because mm -hmm. I always think of like my mom. You mm -hmm. know, my mom and her friends. Like, can they come in my store and will they um, will they like uh, feel comfortable to like? be in there and learn mm -hmm. about CBD, mm -hmm. right? Some people like, I don't know, like a vape shop, you know, and they're just smoking yeah. everywhere. Like I couldn't bring my mom in there. She wouldn't like it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I always did this with 
um, you know, my family in mind because I know they they just didn't, you know, have a deep understanding of, mm. of marijuana on their own. And so there could possibly be some misinformation and, and just misunderstanding. So it's important for me to like, when I open my store, especially for CBD, um, I wanted to think like, how can I have my mom and my aunts come here and be like, wow, this is nice. Mm -hmm. Maybe I want to hear something about it, you know? Yeah, I think that's very important yeah. to convince that generations of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. Let's smoke this joint. Yay! Hey, <laughs> Ghost Island Media.